Oh, welcome, welcome to Libertarians Drinking Coffee Live. A little bit past 3 p.m. on the East Coast. And I know some of you are saying, wait a minute, Larry, you've done a couple. I know I've done a lot of these. This is actually episode number 121. That is how many Libertarians I have had coffee with live. Yes, this actually started several years ago in diners, literally in New York. And then the lockdowns came and that went away. So now I couldn't do that anymore. So I said, now I'll do it this way so I can bring more people on uh, to talk about libertarians who are running. People always say the same thing. Larry, you libertarians. I don't see anybody running. I don't see you guys running. Well, you know what? We got people running. In fact, today I have with me so happy, so excited. The man himself, he's run before. He's been on a debate stage. Like so many people say, you guys never debate. No, no, no. He was. This guy was on debate stage, on TV, rocking it, scolding people, making them scared, and he's running again. I cannot believe it. I'm so lucky to have this man. This man is running in Arkansas for state rep, libertarian candidate, the man himself, Michael Waite. How are you, sir? I'm great, Larry. Thank you. You give the best introductions, by the way. Um, <laughs> you know, you have that. such energy. I don't know how you do this constantly. I think you're a machine, obviously. So, again, yeah, glad to be here, man. I am actually AI. I'm not real. It's true. <laughs> yeah, I am it AI. wouldn't surprise me if, if you it's were. True. Yeah. I'm actually AI. It is true. But you have decided, and the reason why I'm so excited, you can tell I'm excited, because so many of our best libertarians, and you know this, you've watched this, go do something, we're impressed. And then they walk away yes, and we don't see him again. They don't run again, whatever. You have decided like a madman to punish yourself again. Now, right. <laughs> I respect that. But but I got to ask, Michael, why? Why go back into the lines and again? So before before I kind of get into why, I just real quick want to give a shout out if I can, Larry. Um, this Late last week, we lost uh, one of Liberty's own, Christopher oh, yes, Darnell. Right. Um, yes, um, he bootlegger. Uh, he, it's right. He left us. Many of you know him as bootleg libertarian. Uh, he yep. leaves behind a beautiful fiance and um, some small children who all are going to miss him very much. So during this broadcast, we will probably ask for money. I'm going to do that. I'm going to tell you that. But before I do that and ask for our campaign to get money, I'm going to ask you to go to my Facebook page or my Twitter page. It's that down there. Just look up Michael White for Arkansas on Facebook. There's a GoFundMe. That is set up for Christopher Darnell for his final expenses. If you can only give once, give to Christopher Darnell's final expense fund instead of our campaign. Um, he will be deeply, deeply missed. One of the funniest guys that I ever had the chance of meeting. And so I just had to get that out of the way first, um, Larry. So uh, so why am I running? Um, well, you, you said that yeah. and immediately people jumped on board. That libertarian lady comes right away and goes, Michael White is the GOAT. And it and totally has a winnable race. For those of you who've been living under a rock, what goat means is greatest of all time. That's right. It does not mean the animal. It does not (laughs) mean the animal, the goat. I mean, he might be kind of an animal. If I'm AI, he might be a goat. It's possible. But I'm just saying. I'm an animal. That's right. Yeah, Yeah. he's an animal. It's true. But no, that's not what he means. So go ahead. Tell me about what you want to tell me. I'm sorry. Yes. So, you know, in 2022, I ran for U.S. Congress here in the 2nd District in Arkansas um, in a three-way race against the Republican incumbent and a Democrat challenger. And I knew that that was not a winnable election um, in the sense of occupying a seat. And that's not why I ran in that race. I ran that race. First off, we were trying to get ballot access. We had my friend and colleague, Ricky Dale Harrington, running for governor. We wanted to help get that name out there, get the libertarian brand out there. I knew I could do well in that debate. And so that's really why I ran. I ran so that he had the and very you last. you did it. Like, yeah. you did it. You got on the debate stage and you rocked it, my friend. You did. So well, thank you very much. And that was the goal. That was really the goal. Yep. It was to do that, to legitimize liberty a little bit, to get people to stop thinking of it as a joke or that libertarians right. were a joke. And so that's right. why I did it. So about six months ago, uh, another friend of mine in the party, he calls me almost sort of a pre um He's sort of prefiguring this in his head. He says, Michael, you're in a district right now that is one of the handful of districts in Arkansas that is a 50-50 split district. Uh, 50% Republicans, 50% Democrats. And there's only a handful of those. those. No, there's literally a handful. Because most districts have been gerrymandered to sway one way or the other. There's a handful of Democrat districts, but they go 80% Democrat. And the majority of Republican districts go 80% Republican. And he said, Michael, what is your plans for 2024? And I said, well, you know, I I plan on just running for Congress again. I I will do the debate thing again. I'll help out. That'd be a lot of fun. 
and uh, said, I got everything set up. I got signs. I got, you know, what website I got anything I need. And he said, well, I'm thinking if this race ends up being a two way race, meaning that one of the parties, obviously the Republicans, because the incumbent is a Democrat, doesn't run. Right. Would you consider that race? And you would think that'd be an easy answer, right? You go, oh, yes, of course. Right. It actually was a little bit harder because mm -hmm. change. It's a winnable election. It's a totally different formula. There's a totally yes. different level of pressure. Um, you really have to organize and fundraise and really do the work. And so, uh, you know, long story short, prayed about it, thought about it, talked to my wife about it, and decided that's what we were going to do because. And even though she, like I was, we did it anyway. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of felt, <laughs> yeah, exactly. felt called to do it, and so that's why that's why I'm running <laughs> is you know not just not just to occupy the seat. Obviously, I mean, I think that that is the best way to legitimize liberty in my state. You know, it ends and puts to bed the concept of libertarians can't win. Okay? Yes. And uh, then I think it will help us bridge the gap between the effective people that are in the legislature who maybe don't want to go down party lines all the time. Maybe yes. can create a home for them to come to if they feel like they're being pushed in one way or the other. And, so it now uh, becomes the norm that if I'm unhappy, I don't just sit it out or go with the other guy. If I'm unhappy, I can go to the libertarians. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Bring your political willpower, bring your donors, bring everything you got. You know, um, we want to be a home for that so that because there are good legislators in the um, the state house, a handful, not a ton, but there's a, right, there's a handful right, out there. Right. And like right. any state uh, house right now, there are things that get pushed through that I think go against some of these individuals principles and they kind of get in a rock and a hard place. They say to me privately, they'll say, Michael, you know, I went this way on this vote because I kind of was given the talk. The talk was, yep. if I didn't go this way, I was going to get primaried out. And you'd think, you know, I'm a chicken for doing this. But, Michael, I have all these other things I want to do for my district. Yes. And if I'm yes. not there, I can't do those things. Right, and right. So, so I got to give up this so I could get that. I know it's so hard, but. The Sophie's you know, choice. Yes. Yes. Right. It's so hard, but I got I got to tell you, I, I get that. I do. As much as I hate it, I hate it too. But, you know, do we just stand on I need 100%? Or do we take 80% and just keep trying to push for more, right? That's do we right. take the yeah. 80 and just try to push from I agree completely. Wow. Well, you you are not just did um the libertarian lady remember you, but also Justin Beaver, cute Justin Beaver. He actually remembers you. He says last time it was a Republican versus Libertarian Arkansas, Tom Cart Cotton, sorry, versus Ricky Dale Harrington Jr. I love Ricky. I think Lippy Ricky is amazing. He's one of my favorite um, people. Yeah. And he did his own debate stage too by himself. By himself, yeah. It was I a single it. person debate. Yeah. It um, was. Yes. That was in that was in too. 2020. Um, and a little bit different race. Obviously, it was a statewide election, which right. in, requires an incredible larger amount of throughput and political bandwidth to get that accomplished, right? Right. And also, you know, we're Arkansas is a red state. It is a deeply yep. red state, not just the state color, but the political, you know, the dominant party is Republican. Right. Ricky was up against that. And maybe, OK, the odds are he could have won, but they weren't 50 50. His mm -hmm. odds of winning right. might have been closer to 25 percent. So right. it was winnable, but it wasn't like, you know, you're going to want to bet the house on it. Um, right. He obviously he got a, he got libertarians in Arkansas, I think, on the map nationally. He is yes. the reason that I became a libertarian in Arkansas. Um, was yep. because of his election. I was like, wait a second, what, what's going on? We have a, a yes. viable libertarian. What, what is going on? Uh, so a little bit different election than that. This one is, again, I want to drill home to people. This is winnable. Um, mm. the, 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 okay, hold on. So this yeah. is you against who? Against the incumbent? the incumbent. Yes, Representative Ashley Hudson. She is a Democrat here in West Little okay. Rock. And she won her original seat in 2020 by 24 votes. Flip the district. Why are Repu Republicans not running then? This seems like the Republicans would run. Divine Providence, Larry. We're not going to question what the universe hands us. It just hands uh, us. Yes. This. Okay. So, you know, uh, maybe I put that out there in the vibes of the universe, or whatever I said, hey, we're going to get this done. So they're not running anybody. And again, we have a real chance to win it by their own polling metrics. And maybe I shouldn't say this because I guarantee some Democrats out there are watching this in Arkansas. By their own polling metrics, um, there's about 8% of the electorate currently in the battleground district districts who mm. were like, I don't want either one of the two parties. Right. Um, so no matter how their kind of their scoring goes, if we get all the Republican vote, and I think that we will, and we get those other votes, we win. That's we winnable. Win. That's right. Yes. Yeah. That is absolutely. Sam says, yes, take the win. He's on board. Sam is on board. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Guys, absolutely. if you want to support this, and I know you do, head over 
to mw4, the, the number four, liberty.com and donate. It's right there across the bottom of the screen. You can see it. He's also pointing at it. And it's also in the show description. If you see it right there in the show description on both YouTube and Facebook, please go ahead and donate. Throw some, this is a winnable race. This isn't That's just, right. I think Mike White's good looking. I mean, he is good looking, but Thank that's you, not the reason to give him the money, right? Give him the money because he can win, right? Give him like a like or a love because he's good looking. Do that. But give him the money so he can win. He actually it's going to take resources. This happen. It's going to take resources. But more importantly, yeah. I, I want to I keep going on this for a second. Sure. People are validated in the mainstream by how much money they raise. And we may not like that. We may think it's BS and we want this and we want that. Amazing. But they're validated by the amount of money they, they raise. And that goes in the mainstream media. And you might go, well, Larry, what do I care about mainstream media? Because the few people who still watch mainstream media, they vote. And That's this right. is about votes. So let's make that happen. MW4, the number four, liberty.com slash donate. Please give what you can give. 10 bucks is amazing. 100 bucks is better. I'm going to promise right now, I will give 100 bucks. Right now, Ooh. I'll do 100 bucks myself. You can do, if you can't do 100, don't do 100. Do 50, do 25, whatever you can do, but do something that's a winnable race because he needs signs. He needs door hangers. He needs palm cards. He needs all the things. He needs Facebook ads. He needs he all, the, all things. the things. All the all things. All of them. So please, heck, let's help out. Imagine if we can get somebody here, an elected libertarian in Arkansas. That would be amazing. Okay, so I got your race. Got that down. Yep. So let me ask you, in your local district, in your area, what are like the top three issues that people are talking about? Is it is it you know economy, economy, economy? Is it something else going on? Is that a local issue that people are pissed off about the rest of the country maybe wouldn't know? What's the thing here? So what's interesting, too, about this district is that when I talk to voters, you'll find most of them are just moderates. They're kind of right in the middle. They may be registered Republicans or registered Democrats, but they're kind of of the opinion that, uh, hey, you know, the taxation is theft message isn't exactly what's going to sell them. They're like, yeah, it is. Yeah, they don't buy like, that. They're like, what are you going to do with it, though? Right. Like that's, uh, that's okay. kind of, you know, okay. They're there. I'm, I'm over this now. I'm, you know, what is the practicality of what we have going on? And I think what the real frustration is, is they feel like that there is this conversation in the legislature that is we've replaced, you know, practicality with party and mm -hmm. we've replaced results with rhetoric. And mm, they feel yes. just very disenfranchised, sort of like a lot of the country currently feels right mm -hmm. now. Now, we can take that and dissect that into other issues. We can talk about education. We can talk about public safety. You can talk about, again, the economy. Um, but at the end of the day, what it really to them about is about is like, is it just going to get better? Is, do I have to mm. always feel like everything is so contentious? Um, we passed a, um, a pretty broad sweeping education reform here in Arkansas called the LEARNS Act. And LEARNS is a school voucher program like a number of states have. And it's been in federal court like four times, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, like, you know, instantly. And so everything has become incredibly contentious. And so if that's sort of an umbrella issue is the idea of kind of changing the conversation for the better, which I think that Got we it. obviously represent the best viable way to do that. Um, and secondly, you know, economy is sort of a thing that we always kind of focus on on the federal level. Right. We always talk I about like what the federal government's going to do for economy. But as you well know, because you've run for a state office, is that states have a lot of power over their economy, whether they yes, think they so do. or not. Right. And, um, you know, because you're a business consultant and I have, am a businessman, I know the things that attract business and you can't really do a lot of them overnight if you're honest. OK, for right. instance, if you want to have a bunch of uh, really skilled workers in a field, you're not going to have a bunch of them in a day. You right. can you can and generationally create a bunch of them, right? Mm -hmm. So that kind of boils down to education. How do we make a, a more educated workforce for the future? Um, you want safer streets, okay? Where does that come from, Larry? Where does where does safer streets come from? This is an economic issue. No, uh, it's know, more yeah. and more cops. More cops. More, what they say. More yeah. cops but you and I, more you and I really know. Yes, you and I more really know. Policing without question, this is, this and more a, war on drugs. Let's yeah. make more prohibition. Nothing else can be safer. Well, that would be that's sometimes a rallying call, right? But you and I both know that this is an economic issue. Um, yeah. And so when we talk about economics and you say, well, what can a state really do, practically speaking, to improve its own economy? You always step back to, I think, just education. Now, as libertarians, mm -hmm. we both would love government to be completely out of education. OK, right. Completely. Um, but let's think about that for a second, Larry. Why do you and I think that? 
You and I think that because we're independently minded. Why are we independently minded? Because we made our own business. We've made our own money. I don't need the government for anything, right? But we have a large population in Arkansas who is dependent upon the federal government. There's, you know, one in three Arkansans. Yeah, one in three Arkansans is on Medicaid. Um, You know, the graduating class of 2024, the high school seniors, 60 to 70 percent at some point in time in the next 10 years will be on some form of federal assistance. Whether wow. that's whether that's something as simple as just WIC for a pregnancy, or that is food stamps for a period of time, or that is even just an earned income credit for or right. Obamacare or whatever it is, right? So we have a real issue with federal dependency, right? Yes. And so, what are we investing our money in to try to end that? Well, we're spending about ten thousand dollars a student, Larry, here in Arkansas Shh. every year for Rookie twelve numbers. years. Every year, rookie, rookie number, number, rookie Come number. On now it's you all relative. Over Thirty thousand. It's all Come relative. On, it's all relative. <laughs> so you know, my property taxes. You're going to get a kick out of this one. My property taxes here at my house, and I live in just a modest, normal home, are around two thousand dollars a year. You're probably like freaking out about that number. You would kill for that number, right? Yes. But, but yes. again, it's all relative. Oh it's all relative. Okay. So it takes myself and about four of my neighbors to fund a year of education for one student in Arkansas. And they have about a 30% chance of kind of graduating with some basic skill set that's going to make them job ready. That's not right. working. That, that, that's not clearly it. not working. Yeah, you're right. Um, so, you know, how do you, how do you change, how do you change that? What, what do you, what do you do to change that? And also kind of bring a little bit of libertarianism in it. Right. Um, you know, about title one funds, Larry, you you ran for governor. Yes, right? indeed. Okay. So we spend all of our time in education chasing for those that don't know at home, Title I funds are from the federal government, and they're given to states for their education programs to help with impoverished areas, right? To buy free lunches or to support this or buy more school buses or all kinds of things, right? We spend 100% of our time in Arkansas in education chasing 10 to 25% of our funds. 100%. Yes. Okay. New York, same thing. That's why that's why we have a broken curriculum because the curriculum has to match whatever guidelines the federal government has. Why that's we don't right. Because blah, 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 blah. Yeah, all the strings attached. Yeah. All well, the people we hire so we can have the next string and the people we hire. And the test you so take can... and what it's tested on Absolutely. and what is this. Yes. And so you end up basically just perpetuating this cycle of failure. And then yep. the failure gets bigger. So you have to perpetuate the cycle more. Right. Yes. Um, so, Larry, I- I've worked with at-risk youth. Uh, several times in my life. And one thing I came to learn about him is not every kid's going to split the atom, Larry. Okay. Mm. They're just not going to. Okay. Yep. Um, and, and shouldn't. And shouldn't. And shouldn't. And shouldn't. Yes. That's right. But let me tell you something. Have your air conditioner replaced and tell me that that's not a lucrative business. You know, have a, have gonna, a, let me give you some yeah. data right now, just so you sure. understand this. Go the ahead. Average tradesman across America, average makes $88,000 a year. Yeah, that's a livable wage. In, in in almost every, not New York City, but in almost every part of regular America, that's a living wage. Let me tell you that's something, Arkansas, money. that's balling. You're you can good. do really well on $88,000 yeah, if you're living in Arkansas. $88,000 a year for most places, you're doing fine. You yeah. are doing fine. Absolutely. New York City, you're barely surviving. But that's okay. That's only New York City. <laughs> you're like in a cardboard box, but you got a view, you know, the dumpster. But you got a view. It's correct, yes. And you're not, eating, Very you're not actually eating out, out, out of the dumpster. That's yeah. the advantage. Not One the step above it. Yeah, correct. Exactly. Yes. Yes. So um, that concept of that curriculum being tied to these federal standards, chasing your tail for this failure. Um Curriculum choice, the idea that we take school choice one step further. Yes. That's going to take some boldness. That's going to take some, some uh, what do we call them? Revenue neutral solutions, right? You got to have Ooh, revenue neutral solutions. So, for, again, for the people. Now, you, now you, you gave them some of their red meat. That's their that's red right. meat. Right, exactly. <laughs> like because politically yes. speaking, you know and I know that um, we probably don't need that bottom line number we're told. But yeah. they don't know that. And you're in a voice, you're in a chorus of yes. voices in the legislature. Right. So, you know, what's interesting about the trades, Larry, is that a number of trade schools are economically incentivized to place jobs of their graduates. They receive yeah. commissions for placing jobs. Hold on. That's that's yeah. an income opportunity, Larry. Right. Um, we also in the state of Arkansas own a ton of Department of Education facilities that are completely unused. That just oh, aren't is used that right. Yeah, just completely unused. We got all kinds of stuff. We built a new school and we got the old school sitting here. Oh, you know, we built a new a new maintenance depot. We got the old one sitting over here. Could we maybe lease those to trade schools uh, to replace some of this revenue? Could they also be incentivized for job placements? Yes. Yeah, we could even make incubators. That's right. For 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 small businesses too. That too. Look at that. That's right. So then you become a bastion of, of skilled labor. People bring their industry here. 
right? Because they're like, hey, Arkansas is a place to be. They're graduating 4,000 trades, you know, skilled tradesmen every single year in that county. We need to open up our factory there or open up this. So success right. begets success, which is just enterprise in general. Um, so, you know, to me, everything- I like that. You got a lot of good things going on. Let me grab a couple of comments. Sure, People comment. I want to grab a couple of comments yeah. if I could, because uh, let's see if I can grab this. Um, Michael Voss from No Sound Bites Loud says, busy day for you. I expect you to be tired. Yes, you're energized by the candidate. Yes, this is That's actually right. my seventh, sixth show this week. <laughs> so yes, I did six shows this week and I was a guest on four of them. So I did 10, I'm doing 10, I'm doing 11 total shows if you count tomorrow evening, but that's fine. Yes, Mushy. but I am absolutely energized by Michael. That is true. Yes, that is correct. You are absolutely right. So, and Joe says, um, hashtag Larry Sharp isn't real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Joe, he's Accurate. not, he's, he's Accurate. complete, yeah, uh, right. Yes. But, uh, but Joe actually has run before multiple times in Florida. I don't know if you know Joe. He's run several times in Florida. Um, he's, he ran for U.S. House, uh, heads up with the only an R incumbent. So he's done a similar thing, right? Similar. And his, his response is, 300,000 voters would not have a vote if I didn't run. Right. That's an important piece. I agree. Right. Square table degenerates is mad at Arkansas. He says, I can't believe Arkansas voted down weed. For shame. Is that true? I didn't even know that. Is that real? We did. We had a we had a uh, initiative to uh, create a recreational marijuana market in Arkansas, but it wasn't a good one. Um, mm. It created a cartel. It created a big business cartel. It ended some small business opportunities in the CBD industry for a lot of people. It would have moved mm. all that to there. And let me tell you something about how Arkansas works with controlled industries. Once they set that, it would never change. Um, it would Got become it. a very entrenched bureaucracy where that would be it. Um, in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if that happened, that penalties wouldn't go up if you had marijuana that wasn't in like a record, like in a container from the approved vendor. Like so it would actually got worse. Yeah, it had gotten worse. And so that <laughs> people, people were smart enough to understand that. And, um, you know, maybe eventually a, another initiative comes around that makes more sense. Uh, you know, here's, here's also the, the deal too. Arkansas, like at many Southern states, um, exists in the Bible Belt. Okay. Yes. Um, we have a lot of of rural, um, you know, people who live here who um, are kind of just, you know, they're just down home religion. Um, mm -hmm. They don't want dispensaries on their corners. Um, they don't want these things. And here's the thing we have to consider as libertarians: libertarians do believe in community standards. If we want to get together and voluntarily create community standards, we're we're allowed to do that. Um, so when I talked to, for yeah, instance, you know, I, yeah. I want to bring this piece up. You're, sure. you're right. When, when I was talking about this, there were some people who were mad because some local communities in New York were voting against dispensaries in their local areas. Right. And they're like, as a libertarian, aren't you angry? I said, no, I think it's dumb, but I'm not angry at it. Right. I right. think they're going to lose revenue. It is my opinion. That's a bad opinion. Right. However, to your point, Michael, if you don't want them in your neighborhood, I'm not against that. Local communities can say we don't want them. That's Someone right. Someone else will get that revenue, but That's it's right. fine. So now your now your friends are going to go to the other town over, buy their weed, and come back into your place. Yeah, fine on yeah. you, but I'm with you. I agree. L freedom means freedom for people people to do stuff I don't like. That's right. And and, and again, economically, that might not be a great decision, right? Um. So here's kind of how I think the cannabis conversation is going to go because I've run this by some, uh, some pastors and religious leaders in some very rural parts of the state. And said, you know, well, if it were kind of de facto recreational through our medical program, mm -hmm. because our medical secretary can just basically say, hey, Larry, you got an ingrown toenail, you get a card, right? Is that perfect? Oh, okay. Is that regulated like onions? No, it's not. Um, but would be that, some, is that something that you would, you know, support? And they would support that. So, um, okay. you know, and, and again, I think, you know, you know me well enough, but the people at home don't. I'm kind of an incrementalist. If I can mm -hmm. get one inch of liberty, give me that one inch of liberty. Um, because I believe in it and I know it sells eventually. And I know people are gonna go, Hey, that's not so bad. You know, maybe we do this now, maybe we do that, but people don't go from where we are to it, what, and Kapistan in one jump. Okay. Right, right, <laughs> that's right, not right, going right. to happen. Yeah. Right. That's good. Square table generous comes back and says so many Bibles. I think the state bird of Arkansas is a Bible <laughs> and nothing wrong with that. That's right. Bible, Bibles, yes. bullets, and babies. Those are the three big things here in Arkansas. There we go. That's right. I, I like that. So he goes on a 5,000 super chat. Thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate it. Awesome. He says, can't wait to talk to you tomorrow. He means can't wait. I will be on his show. That is one of my shows tomorrow, okay, uh, cool. 5 30 p.m. Eastern. I will be on Square Table Generate Show as a guest. Nice. So please, if anybody wants to watch, go ahead. But instead of super chatting me, and I appreciate the super chat, do me a different favor instead. Head on over to mv4liberty.com slash donate. MW4. Throw Michael some. Say again? MW4 Liberty. You said MV. You know what I said? You said MV. Oh, I'm sorry. MW. MW. 
for the number four liberty.com slash donate. You can see it there at the bottom of the screen and also on the show description of both YouTube and Facebook. Click and donate what you can, right? I'm going to donate today 100 bucks. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm going to give 100 bucks on right now. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm practicing what I preach, right? I'm not going to sit here and bug you for money if I'm not going to do it myself. So I will do it myself. Please do that. It is important. This is a winnable race. This is something that really matters. You can see what he's talking about. It will work. And I know some of you are getting it, right? They're, they're really getting it because Chris says, this is exactly what the party should be doing, finding and supporting good candidates for winnable races. Chris, I Yes, agree. Chris, you are correct. So everyone who hears it, if you can give, give. Look, if you can, if you've got the cash to give 250, give 250, right? If you got it, give it. But if you don't have it, I get it. No worries. You can also give 150, 10. It all works. He needs Facebook ads. He needs palm cards. He needs all, signs, all the things. And if you're going to say, well, Larry, I just don't have the cash now. No worries, as you can do. You can click this like button right now. That's free. That's and right. you can go follow him on Twitter at MW4Liberty. Just go follow. Click the follow. That's free. No issues. It's free. You can do it. Share his stuff. Be a Facebook, be a Twitter, be a YouTube warrior for him. That will also work. The more people who see it, the more valid this is, the more it matters. Please help out to the best of your ability. It does matter. Get us All right, past those a algo rhythms. Yeah, the, yes, exactly right. Yes. Uh, Mr. No Name says, I'm from Arkansas, and I think the current governor is doing a poor job, my opinion. What do you think most people think about what's happening? Do most people in Arkansas think it's going in the right direction? We just need some tweaks? Do they think, nah, it's failing badly. We got to really fix. What do you think most people in Arkansas are thinking right now? So let's take a step back first, and I'm mm -hmm. going to answer this question a lot like a politician, okay? <laughs> so, okay, do it. So do first it. is, you know, uh, Governor Sanders was kind of foisted upon the people of Arkansas. Her okay. father was governor, um, and yep. so she was just kind of the anointed successor. Um, it wasn't like we really. New York even, State doesn't know anything about that with our three Cuomos. <laughs> yes, <laughs> no, no, it's about that, right? We didn't really have a choice. It felt like it was like she announced, and everybody just knew that's who's going to be the person. Not, my, the Republicans shouldn't have even had a primary, to be honest. I mean, and so that's kind of the thing. Her first year kind of wrapped up, and I think that she spent a lot of time focusing on headline issues, ways that she could maybe make a national resume, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. Um, now the learns act, in my opinion, is a, is a good step in the right direction. Is it perfect? No. Um, okay. we have a part-time legislature in Arkansas. So when you try to do massive reforms, you're going to end up with some chicken wire duct tape legislation. Typically that's kind of how it was put through It's funded under an emergency. It did a bunch of things. Um, there was a lot of sort of, um, pandering and positioning to a base, you know, regarding wokeism and this kind of stuff. Of course. And, and that's just what you're going to get with party. I think, I think that most people could have, could have left that at the door, to be honest. I think that that's, but do you think it, most yeah. people in Arkansas were, were satisfied with it or not? And then long I think, run, I think, I think right now, magic. honestly, I think most people in Arkansas feel like they're in a rut, like it's moving, ah. like it's moving forward, but it's moving forward at such a slow pace. And, mm. you know, but they're also still kind of beholden to, well, it could be worse. Right. Um, so I don't know if people are just, you know, shouting her praises from the rooftops. I know, obviously, always the dissenting voices are louder. You know, I will give her this. OK, I'll, if I have to give her a positive, um, her new budget came you don't out. Have to. Her new budget came out two or three days ago. We're in our, our fiscal session today. All right. Okay. I, yesterday we started Arkansas's fiscal session and this year's budget is 1.7% greater than last year's, okay? Now that's, okay, but it's still greater, but it's less greater. It's usually about 3%, okay? That's what I was going to um, say. We have- So you got rookie numbers compared yeah. to New York. We're yeah. like, no, turn you it, know, ratchet it up. So, I mean, if I'm going to be, if I'm going to give a praise, I'm going to say, okay, you didn't grow the monstrosity mm. as fast as before. Now, of course, budgets make a lot of assumptions, Larry. We've made a lot of assumptions right. about revenue, about registrations, things like that. Even with the school vouchers increasing, we still, quote unquote, run a surplus. And we can talk about that later if you want to, about whether that's good or bad. But the real issue, I think, that's hidden behind the scenes. And when you talk to people about this on the streets, they kind of get it, is for as independent as our Kansans think they are. You know, for, you know, we're a rough and tumble, you know, group of people. We don't need any help. You know, I will pull my neighbor out of the ditch with my truck. I'll get that, you know, field plowed. I'll kill that deer. Um, we're very beholden to the federal government when it comes to money. Mm. Okay. We have around a $6 billion budget in the state and we, about $34 billion goes through the state from, you know, from federal budget. So the big one is, and this is what, 
How do I say this? My budget is over yeah. two hundred billion dollars. I know, man. You got like how many Arkansas's are in 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 New York? Oh, yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. two hundred billion. Yes. Dude, yeah, so many. Yeah, yes. I mean, your convenience store is probably bigger than like our Target. I don't, I, you know, I don't know. And it's in Little Rock. New I York mean, City's over a hundred billion. Just yeah. New York City, two hundred billion dollars. That's yes. crazy to think about, right? Your entire um, budget. I'm not joking. Is New York City's police budget? Oh yeah, for sure. In yes, our entire our budget, six billion dollars. The entire amount of money that comes through the state is one third of the entire New York budget, and that's with all the federal dollars too. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, here's what happened with the federal government. If you if you are a student of history, you know one thing about them: they're very good at using the purse strings to change policy. Right. Yes. Okay. They figured this out yes. with the speed limit. You know this. You were there. Yes. When they were like, "Hey, Absolutely. you don't got to change to 55, but if you don't change to 55, we're not going to fund your money. roads." Right. That's right. And yes. so all the states did it. It got repealed. Uh, it happened when I was in middle school with the drinking age. We were like six years away yes. from buying our first beer, and they were like, "Look, you don't got to change to 21, but if you don't, we're not right. going to give you the money." Now, on a, a little more serious note or divisive note, I guess you could say, uh, the CMS mandate for the vaccine. Um, oh, right. Right. Yeah. Right. They didn't say, hey, you don't have to mandate it in your healthcare facilities, but if you don't, you can't participate right. in Medicare. And I'm sorry, right. every single hospital and farm and, and thing in, Med in Arkansas fails tomorrow. Yeah. Right. 100%. And yes. so we're, and we're that goes we're, real yeah. fast. I just, I like sure. what you're saying because what you're actually saying is you care about the average person because I know in New York, the, the New York City is where I'm sure you have elite neighborhoods in your area, which are the same, which is, the wealthy people don't care about those doctors and hospitals because they all use private doctors. That's right. Yeah. So the wealthy don't care. The wealthy will go They're They're writing checks and swiping credit cards because they're wealthy. The elites, this is, you know, whatever for you guys, I'm going to my doctor that I just swipe my credit card because I'm wealthy. I don't That's care. Right. I think and it they, happens. Next time, I'm sure. And they view social welfare as a way to sort of appease the masses. So they don't riot toward right. their neighborhood. Right. It's like a yes. payoff. That's how they kind of view this. It's not like some sort of uh, humanitarian aid. This is like, right. keep away from my gated neighborhood. I'll pay you just enough to stay over there and not get upset. That's what this really is for these people. Um, right. And so when That's we have really this. really good. You know, yeah. Let me grab some more comments. You, you're, you're getting people to comment, which is great. So Mike goes on to say, Department of Education is horrendous, but states can do a lot to break from that oversight. It's exactly what you're talking about. That's what I'm talking right? about. Yeah. That we can start to break away and still provide value and not be caught in that cycle, right? That crazy cycle. Absolutely. And it is, and it's a, and it's a huge cycle of dependence. Two of my favorite libertarians. On, thanks, Kenneth. Good to see you, man. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yes, you're Kenneth's one of my favorite libertarians. Yeah. Yes, there we go. Yeah. I love that. Too much. That's really good. So let me grab a, a couple more. Um, sure. Let's see here. Um, Jay Barnes, Mike White, and Larry Sharp. Two of my favorite libertarians. I'm wearing my Larry Sharp shirt. Ooh. Oh, thank you. Thank I you. have mine on too. Yes, I do. <laughs> I am actually wearing mine. Yes, the peaceful warrior says, "One step above a dumpster. Only you Only can you. prevent dumpster fires." That's right. Put that, that on That is accurate, sticker. too. Yes, absolutely. Actually, that's so, a uh, great bumper sticker. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, it really is. Yeah. that That is good. Mm -hmm. So speaking of that, let me ask you then. Sure. How you have all these ideas, which I love. Obviously, people are going to ask you questions. You can answer them. Mm -hmm. You've already proven you can be in the debate stage. Love that. How are you going to, in this great time that you have, great opportunity, I should say, not time, opportunity, how are you going to make impact? What do you think is the, the plan or the most important piece? So we have about 6,000 doors to knock on. That's goal number mm, one. Okay. Um, I believe in meeting people where they are, and that means meeting them where they are. So if I have to knock on all 6,000 myself, I'm going to do that. This is my full-time job until election day. Um, that's number one. Getting out there, just, ha hey, I'm Michael. I'm running. What is important to you? Let's mm. talk about that. Okay. Um, okay. Not what's important to me. Not here's my top three. Here's whatever. What's important to you? And then hopefully, because I'm pretty good at it, Here's how liberty can help assuage that right. problem, right? Okay, right. so that, that's kind of number one. Hopefully along that line, we continue to legitimize liberty as a choice um, where people, they understand that this is something viable that's available. Um, it's no longer on life support. I mean, I think, you know, we all, I know you in COVID era in 2020 certainly thought liberty was on life support where you were. Yes. Right? right? Okay. So it still is. Yeah. And, and, it, and it really is. It, it's shut into yes. some circles. Right. And so that's kind of yes. number two. And then number three, again, positively impacting the conversation between people. Um, yes. Everyone, Larry, the average person that I meet, whether they are registered Democrat or registered Republican, they want the same things. 
Mm. They, they want the same things. They want they want the same a better standard of living. They want their children to have a better life than them. They want safe streets. They want you know good health care, access to affordable goods and services. They want the same things, right? Right. Um, but again, we've gotten so divided in this binary system here, where if you're not doing it my way, it could be the right. best idea in the world. It could be the best idea in the world. But if you're not doing it my way, I can't support it. We're never going to be a better people if we keep doing that. It's just not going to well, happen. It's funny because yeah. you're you're talking away, and Nathan brings it up. Nathan says, "I could see you doing the FDR fireside chat style campaign as well, and maybe you should consider that too. Maybe you should consider doing like a a radio show or a podcast where you talk to I local do people. a radio show every now and then here. Yeah, so there we go. Yeah. So that's it. You're already doing it already. I I love that. That libertarian lady says, "I'm a social media water warrior for Michael White." She has become there one. There we yes. go. Yes, there we go. Thank we you are, very much. We already way. have a couple. I I do love that. So um, Sam says, "Share the video. Let people know there are good candidates out there to vote for." He is correct. So I'm going to ask you again, guys. Click that like button. It does matter. I know I bug you about it, but I do share it if you can. But more importantly, please head over to M W. For Liberty, the number four, nmw4liberty.com slash donate. Throw a couple of bucks, Michael's way. He could use it. Every little bit counts. He's going to have to get, how else can you do fireside chats? You can't buy a fireside. You got to right. have a fireside. I can't buy wood. I mean, you know, I guess I can go to the woods and get wood, but that requires gas. Well, I guess I could there walk, but I need shoes. I mean, well, I guess I could, go, I could go barefoot, but I probably need some bandages after. So yes, there everything we go. takes See? something. That's right. It yeah. all takes the cash. So if you can do a little bit, it will help. I will give a hundred bucks. I would ask any of you who could do 100 bucks, please do 100 bucks if you can. If you could do more, if you if you got the cash, you can give 250. Give 250 if you can do it. But 20, 10, 5, all good. MW4, the number 4, liberty.com says donate. If you can't do that, please follow what Sam just said. Share the video. That's right. Yeah. Right? You know, do, 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 go out there and, and, and hit the like button. Share. Follow him on, on Twitter at MW4 Liberty on Twitter. It still works. Still good. All good. Buds in reality is on. He says, nobody deserves this spot more than MW for Liberty. Thank you, Sean. That is Sean Collins. Very good man right there. There we go. The Scientific Libertarian 2.0 says, so much liberty, it's breaking Facebook's terms of service. Yes, scientific it is. Yes, we're trying to stay under the radar here. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. And that Libertarian lady, who is your social media warrior, says, Michael, there's a weekly podcast when not campaigning, the Black powder podcast that's right yes so you're already doing your fireside chat but don't you have like a couple guys on there i do yeah marcus matthews and eric parker eric parker's out of, he was in florida now he's in north Carolina. i remember yes and then i remember marcus he was in florida. i actually helped uh yeah. i helped him raise money when he ran locally down there and um um where was he running again he was in jacksonville jacksonville that's Around where it was, yes. yeah, it was him and tub are kind of buddies yes. yeah yeah exactly yes. um yes. so but and again, for the past two years, I've been able to guest host a four-hour radio show, uh, fill-in host. I've done that about once a month nice. for about the past nice. two years here in Little Rock um, on the Fox affiliate. So we have a pretty good listenership. Um, I'm not allowed to do that right now during the campaign, though, because of equal How time come? stuff, equal time stuff, equal time uh, stuff. I'm a candidate, and they don't want to have to have the other candidate go. Well, you know, I want four hours on the radio, <laughs> so that that's why it's just we're pushed to the side right now. I do every now and then appear you know, for some bona fide news stories though. So we okay. do that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's nice. I do like that. Um, Michael Voss asked a question, which I know the answer to, but maybe others don't. So I should bring it up anyway, just for anyone who might not. Are you a 2A supporter? What are your thoughts on red flag laws? Obviously with the, you probably saw the debate last night with, um, if you want to call it a debate, yeah. uh, the, the slaughter last Wikipedia. night. Wikipedia. Yeah, it's exactly. on Wikipedia. It's <laughs> between Spike Cohen and David Hogg. However, yeah. it's a valid question. That- sure. Great Go question. Ahead, yeah, so uh, I am endorsed by Gun Owners of Arkansas, which is the affiliate of oh. Gun Owners of America here in Arkansas. So, yes, I'm, I'm very proud to a supporter. Red flag laws, I am in no way, shape, or form uh, for them at all. I think that they undermine due process. They create all sorts of moral hazards. Um, no. So I hope that answers it. Uh, I consider myself pretty much to be a gun rights absolutist as much as I think you can say a word like that. So, yes, uh, um, I'm as about as pro 2A as they come, I think. There we go. Josh asked a question. Is it true that Coach John Calipari already endorsed you? 
Uh, yes, yes, he has. No, he has. But yes, uh, we're gonna we're gonna go after it. Um, so what's funny is my wife spent a long time in Kentucky. She was there for uh, many years in in her mm. youth, and so uh, him coming from Kentucky here is kind of funny. She still has friends in Kentucky who are like, "How did y'all get him?" I'm like, "Just because we're better, I guess." I don't know. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's very good. That's very good. Olivia says Kansas is in the same boat with cannabis, mm. except we don't even have medical yet. By the way, Olivia will be on this show next week. Okay, great. So I'll be having her. She's also running for office, so she'll be on okay. next week. So you can watch her, her next week. So yeah, I think this, but again, Kansas also, Bible Belt, right? I mean- mm -hmm. You're so probably reaching kind issues. of the top of it, yeah. Right, yeah, similar, that's what I thought. Similar issues, of course. I, I get that completely. So let me ask, I guess, maybe the hardest question of it all. Sure. Is there another win besides just winning the seat? Now, obviously, clearly I'm excited. I want you to win this damn seat. It's a winnable race. We don't have many of them. Don't get me wrong. I like when libertarians run. I think we make impact all the time. But the problem is the problem. The issue, maybe it's a better way of saying it. The issue is if I know you can't win, if I know that already, my expectations are lower, right? That's and right. then when you do something like get in debate stage, I'm blown away. I'm telling my friends, I'm going nuts. I'm, act I'm doing a victory lap like we won the presidency, right? Because I'm so happy. And meanwhile, because the Democrats and Republicans can put up a, a, you know, stretch Armstrong and he'll be on the debate stage. I mean, <laughs> yeah, exactly. so, I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. But now this case though, this is a winnable race. Mm -hmm. Is there a, another victory that you would see even if you don't actually get the seat? You know, I could I could give you that like nice, polite answer about winning hearts and minds and things like that. But no, the truth is to me that the only win is winning this seat at this point in time. Okay. Um, you know, I feel, you know, a year, two years ago, I said, you know, if this happened and if this happened and if this happened and this, if this happened, we could win a race in Arkansas. All those things happened. You know, mm. we're in a red state during a, a blue presidency, during a presidential election year in a purple district with a 50-50 split, a two-way race where the dominant state party is not running a candidate. I mean, these things, all the things aligned like an eclipse plus the, the planets and everything else at one time, right? <laughs> it was the so, eclipse that did it. That's, that's what, what did it. It came right it over Arkansas, too. Right over yes. Arkansas. <laughs> yeah, so, um, no, that's the win, Larry. The, the win is winning this race because, I'll be honest, if we can't win this one, dare I say maybe we can't win anyone. Um, mm. you know, I'm fully committed to this. I'm in a place in my life where I can do this full time. I don't have to do anything else but this campaign right now. I have Love been I have been graced with really some really good supporters early on. You know, we raised around twelve thousand dollars in the first twenty four hours of our campaign. Nice. Um, you know, I'm well known in Central Arkansas from the radio and from the debate and everything else. I I'm pretty well liked and pretty well respected. You know, people, when they talk about me, at least I've heard, they say, hey, he's a libertarian, but he's not one of those crazy ones. Okay, I hear that. that hey, that's I'll take it. Whatever. I'll take um, it. Whatever's in my vote, that's that's the one I am. That's right. Yes. And people are hungry for a change. They, they, they really, really, really want something different. We have the opportunity to give them that. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I think that's 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 what we're going for. It's it's the win. That's the, that's what this is about. I like that. Now, you have sadly made something very bad for me. The scientific libertarian says, seeing Michael White next to Larry Sharp makes me want to see Larry Sharp with the beard. <laughs> <laughs> That's your fault, Michael. That's so your fault. So scientific, I think, has <laughs> scientific has like a thing with beards. I've seen I've noticed he's taken like Chase Oliver's picture and like uh, did like an AI beard on it one time. I think he did that. So yeah, I think he wants to see everybody in a beard. So yeah. yes, but I have run with the beard before. I've done both. I've done the beard, not the beard. I I do whatever is the thing. I don't the mind. I, I, I got you. It doesn't matter to me. I don't care. I shave it, I keep it, but it's all good. Generally speaking, the lazier I am, the longer my beard. <laughs> Beards become work, though. You know, like yes. to keep them looking good. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Yes. So Robert asks an important question. Is it possible for you to seek the endorsement sure. of the county GOP or would you not want it if they did offer it? I think that it's very possible. Um, you know, obviously, so early on in the campaign, uh, we'd be stupid not to know that we needed to reach out to Republicans um, sure. because there's no Republican candidate. So we sent out a, a large number of donor letters and announcement letters to sort of key players in the Republican Party in Arkansas. And basically said, hey, look, here we are. Um, you know, we align with you on these issues. We may not on these, 
But these things that are important to you, um, we align with you on. Considering there's nobody here, would you consider supporting us? Um, we got some donors from that. We got some people that contacted nice. us from that and said, hey, come talk to our women's Republican group. Um, you right. know, come talk at our so-and-so town hall. So, um, yes, I think that either a soft endorsement just from word of mouth or even an official one is not something that we would be upset about. Uh, I don't think that at this point in time, I'm not worried about really disenfranchising anyone because here's what I know. That maybe okay. the Democrat Party of Arkansas doesn't know. I have had blue dog Democrats, okay, old school Democrats, 1990s Democrats, right, RFK kind of Democrats, who have said, "Michael, I'm voting for you." Nice. I don't, I'm voting for you, and 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 they go, you know what? It, you could if you had an R behind your name with everything you believe, I could not vote for you, but I'm going to vote for you just because you don't. And now, if that doesn't say wow. how crazy that is, it's a little yeah, crazy. No, 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 no. That's not crazy. That's that's. Yeah. I got to tell you, and it's similar. In New York State, when in 2022, the Republicans said, Larry, will support you if you become a Republican. Mm -hmm. I said, then I lose. In New York State, they hate Republicans. Yeah. Right? The average voter. It's three to one Democrat to Republican in New York State. Most people who, are, who would vote Republican are leaving the state every year. More and more are leaving. We're losing 300,000 New Yorkers every single year. 300,000 every year. At least 200,000 of those are Republicans, at least. Yeah. Right? Are, are leaving. So the state's becoming bluer and bluer. Becoming a, me running as a libertarian on a Republican line with a Republican endorsement, that's the way to win. Right. 25% yeah. of the people who, who support me in 2018 were registered Democrats. That's right. So because you, there's what something you're saying, about, there's I have something data. About, you are correct. There's something about that, that letter being there. It's it just yes. like, hey, I just can't do it. But you know what? Even everything you believe, Michael, even though I think you might be 95% Republican, which I'm not, but if they said yes. that, right? They're like, I can vote for you. So because they 100%. want real change and they feel like their party has left them. Um, so yes, uh, we're, we're totally fine with getting the endorsement. And I think honestly, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if here in a month or two, we have that. So you think it might actually happen? Yes, I think so. Yeah. That's nice. Well, I do have some bad news about the beard though. Joe says he's 0-3 running with a beard. <laughs> so yeah, so we're going to break that for you. You might be making a mistake here. Then I, mean, I think the, Hey, Hey, we got to, Hey, sevens are coming up eventually. I mean, so, yes. you know, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yes. This is the, this is the year. This is the so, year. Yeah. No, this was your year for the beard. That's, That's right. the problem. You messed it up. <laughs> ask, uh, ask Ted Cruz. He That's went right. beard and still won. He still won. The eclipse happened this year, yeah. Joe. That's why. It's yep. the eclipse. See, Joe, eclipse. you messed up. The eclipse means the beard. I'm going to grow my beard. Okay, that's it. There you go. He's done. I'm growing my beard now because it's the eclipse. And people say, why do you have a beard? Uh, duh, eclipse. Duh, eclipse, yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Now you had to come over New York, right? It came over uh, top of New York State, right? It did, but not where I was. More towards okay. the western New York. Yeah, have you ever seen a total area. eclipse? I know we're going on a tangent. I have. have a total Absolutely. one? God, it was awesome. It was awesome, yes. by the way. Yeah. I have seen it. So I'm, I'm old enough to remember that dumb stuff. So yes, I don't care anymore. So yes, <laughs> that's, that's the issue. I'm, I'm, I'm too old for this. It I'm was like the one thing that it was yeah. the one natural phenomenon someone had told me about that lived up to like the expectation. Oh, you know, you know what I, I mean? It. Like, you know, yes. when I was going to see the Grand Canyon one time, they were like, someone's like, oh, it's breathtaking. It's going to change your life. You know, I get out of the car and I'm like, OK, yeah, it's a big hole in the ground. It's pretty. But uh, it's not like it didn't change my world. Change this my was kind of yeah. like life changing. I was like, this is amazing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is a big deal. I completely agree. Um, I saw the Grand Canyon, too. Um, and it was nice. But yes, yeah. not life changing. That's not right. life changing. Yeah. But it but it was nice. That's true. So we're going for the win. I get it. Let me ask you, is there a, I guess, is there a what's the word I'm looking for? Is there like a a benchmark? That's what I mean. A benchmark to where you know things are going well. Like, do you need to have a certain amount of money you've raised or a certain amount of people in a poll? Like, are you gonna be able to buy polling locally? Will that be a thing you can do to know where you are? Will there be a benchmark or is this kind of just Keep fighting till November, and what happens, happens. Or so are there I, benchmarks? I worry about imposing benchmarks on myself because at this Ooh, point, okay. um, um, you know, I have to go full speed regardless. That's true. So the only thing that a benchmark can do for me, I think, is give me a false sense of uh, security, right? Ooh, um, okay. And, and, and like so here's, think. Yeah, it's right. And so here, here's the only thing that I, that I keep saying is, you know, the Democrat Party, as minor as they are in Arkansas, is still much more well-funded than we are. Yeah. Um, our opponent is going to raise a ton of money and she's going to use a lot of that money to hire a lot of people to do things for her. She will not do for herself. Okay. So okay. because of that, we will probably not raise as much money as her, but if I can raise a decent amount early, I can make up money in time because time is money. 
So uh, I got it. See okay. what I'm saying? I can I can do more earlier. I can get out there and and, and see more people earlier. Um, that's really kind of the only thing is that uh is increase my delta v early on. If you're into uh, orbital mechanics or, or rocket science, you know what I'm talking about. There's probably only one or two people out there. Yeah. But this is about going fast early and then trying to hopefully fly over the finish line in a really good position. Got it. You got to get to the center and do that. Do that with a ricochet thing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, gravity turn. Yeah, yeah you got to do that thing. That's what that's you got to right. do. I like that. That's, right. that's yeah. not bad. Well, Joe also goes on to say that Vegas is life changing. It can be, particularly yeah. if you get married. I don't know. You get married. I, it seemed yeah. like every time I was in Vegas, Joe, it, it, you know, the first day I was like, oh, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. And the next day I'm like, there's anywhere else in the world I'd rather be. Like, you know, like <laughs> there we go. How do I get out of this casino? Where is the exit? <laughs> I, I think we've made Nathan mad, though. He said, as an Arizonan, I resent that being so accurate about the Grand Canyon. <laughs> yeah. It's still really pretty, Nathan. I mean, it really it is. is. I mean, yeah. It is really pretty. It is. But I got to tell you, people don't realize, and I'm going to do a, a quick push here. New York has some amazing things to look at. What people don't realize about New York City, if I can pump my city for a moment, you can see it, you can see it in the background. Oh, you can see it in the background. Yes, yep. you can see it. My pump my city for a moment. Um, New York City is one of the oldest cities on the continent. That's right. It's the oldest big city on the continent. There are some older cities in Florida. I think St. Augustine, Florida, I think is the oldest city. It's the oldest city in um, I think in the in the continent. But the oldest, bi oldest big city is New York, 1600s. We have some real history here. Mm -hmm. Right. Literally, I took my daughter in. There's catacombs in New York yeah. City. So you can go get, see catacombs in New York City under the churches. Alexander Hamilton is, is buried here. You can do a, a, a Wall Street tour. I mean, there's a lot. And of course, there's always the U.N., the Freedom Tower, Statue of Liberty, all the touristy stuff. But there's a lot of interesting stuff here. So I so I think there are places to go. It's not the Grand Canyon. So what you're saying, Larry, is if I come to New York, you're going to show me around. Any day, tell me. Okay, cool, awesome. Hundred percent. We are going to do a a Wall Street walking tour. Okay, great thing to do. People don't understand how amazing that is. You really understand the history of New York. People don't realize that New York City used to be just the tip of Manhattan. That's, That's it. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that was New York City. Now it's five boroughs. Brooklyn was it? But those of you who are older, anybody remember there was a, the old TV show Welcome Back, Cotter, from the seventies. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. In the beginning of that show, it showed a picture of Brooklyn because it was it was supposed to be in Brooklyn. And it said America's fourth largest city. That was actually on the sign going into Brooklyn. Because hmm. Brooklyn used to be its own city. Its own city, yeah. Before it was actually incorporated into New York City, which is five separate counties. So, so yes. I, I saw something interesting the other day. I'm fascinated by historical photographs of, of large cities in America. Mm -hmm. um, and I saw a picture of New York during the development of Central Park. Uh, Ooh, after yes. everybody had been kicked out and they were bulldozing and all this stuff. And this is, I want to say this is like, I don't know how long ago this is. It's a long time ago. And there was like a shanty town. Yes. That was built like during the construction. Because of the water that was there. It was the weird, and like, I, and then I'm like, okay, I can see how this would have gone. Like, you got to leave now. We're opening the park up. And they're like, dude, this is my house. <laughs> like, I mean, so, <laughs> yeah. I mean, a lot of the spots in Manhattan used to be farmland. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Right, they used to be farmland. They didn't realize how this was farmland. Absolutely. And believe it or not, New York City in the early times were, was really, believe it or not, really anti-Catholic. Oh, yeah. Very yeah. anti-Catholic. Well, I mean, you had that. a lot of- That you Gangs know, of New York movie, yeah. TV movie thing, that was, I mean, it obviously was exaggerated, but it was based on something real. Well, I mean, because you have now, you have the Irish and you have Italian immigrants, both of whom are Catholic, a lot of them, right? 100%. And they're taking our jobs and, and they're, you know, yeah. they're, they're drunk bastards and they're doing this. And so, yeah, you can see how that would become this thing that would happen. Yeah, that's right. So let me ask you then that I'll go down that road real fast and I don't want to keep you too long. I'm keeping you almost No, this hour. is great. I love this. Yeah. Um, is there an issue with minority voters in your district that they might rush to the Libertarian Party? Hispanic people, maybe immigrants, black people. I don't know if you have Asian, uh, many Asian yeah. migrants in your area or not. Um, but is 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 that a thing? Because you see it, you see it right now across the country. Right. A lot of minority voters are leaving Democratic Party. They are. Yeah. Some of them are just checking out. Period. Mm -hmm. Right. And then some of them are going to the Republicans. That's right. You have that happening where where you are too, or no? You know, it's hard to say, uh, Larry, on one hand, we have a lot of voter apathy in, in the black community in, in, in Arkansas, just in general. Sure. OK, um, and there's probably a number of reasons for that. And we could we could spend a whole hour probably dissecting that problem. Right. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you this is, you know, I, I, again, a, a host, a co-host, the Black Powder podcast with Marcus Matthews, um, who happens to be a melanated uh, brother of mine. Right. Mm -hmm. And we talk a lot about the um, compulsion of the black community for the Democrat vote, like how that has become a thing. Right. 
And why is that like, it's almost antithetical to what it should be, right? Mm. I'll tell you this, I'll tell you this, just in common conversation with the people that I know, uh, like for instance, my neighbor down here, four doors down, black dude. He said, man, Democrats ain't never given me nothing. 100%. He goes, hey, yes. he said, they've always just given me enough just to barely, you know, get by. And he goes, but yep. see, I can't vote for the Republican. So yes, yes, we have a real opportunity there to bridge that gap. That's because, okay. So that yeah. is true. I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah, we have a real opportunity too. And, and you know, um, I, my district uh, is sort of very diverse. I mean, there is a there's a section of my district that is highly black, and I will mm -hmm. be knocking on every single door, and I'll be talking about how bad the man is, and let's go get him. And here you go, come vote. We're ready. Absolutely. Yeah. So I love absolutely. It. Yeah. So just to show that I'm not I'm not just screwing around. Um, here is my. I just donated. Right there, you can see it. I just did it. Thank you. I got my thank you. That's awesome. I've given my money. I need you guys to do the same thing. MW, the number four, liberty.com slash donate. If you can do that, please do so. Again, if you can do, I just did a hundred bucks. If you can do a hundred, do a hundred. If you can't, no worries. Give what you can. If you got the cash, do 250, do 250. If you got it. If you, if you know don't have somebody no out there, if you know somebody out there who's very wealthy, who can't take their money with them, remind them that $3,300 maximum donation. Um, one correct. of those this month will put us close to our goal. Our goal for this month is $10,000. I think we're pulling up on three right now. So uh, yep. if somebody could, if there's a big donor out there watching, or you know somebody who's like, man, this guy's got a ton of money. He would love to give to a campaign. Definitely share this with him. Uh, hey, I'll get on the phone call with him. Have him call me. Yes. I mean, that's part of this campaign. I have to do that. I've learned now, thanks to you, Larry, and some coaching, how to ask for money from people. Yes. Because, yeah, <laughs> you have to do that in politics. And yes. unfortunately, it's just the truth. Yeah. Absolutely. What 100% it's important. And I'm happy to hear that's happening because um, if we can get any type of minority vote, mm -hmm. nothing but a home run. That's so right. Michael, is there anything that I've missed something before we wrap this up that I should be doing talking about something you want to say before we, we wrap this up? Uh, you know what, Larry? I don't know if there's anything else I can add at this point in time. Uh, definitely visit my website, mw4liberty.com. Um, you can read about me there. You can read about my thoughts on some issues on state governance. I'm available for contact. Um, I'm always willing to have a conversation with anybody about anything. So if, mm -hmm. uh, if you uh, want me on your podcast or you just want to reach out to me and bounce off the issues, I I'm always available to do that. My wife will tell you that I love to talk. Uh, there we go. I, and I love to talk to everybody and I tend to like people. Um, you know, if I don't like you, you're probably just a, a real asshole. I mean, because I tend to get along with pretty much everybody. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. that's really about it. I mean, thanks for having me on there. I really appreciate it. Of course. I think I might be so because if you but if, if you like me and I like you, you probably are an asshole because I like a lot of assholes. So maybe <laughs> reverse. Maybe. Maybe so. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for being on. I appreciate it. everyone watching. I want to say one more time, please go support him. Follow him at MW4Liberty on Twitter. Check out his Facebook page too. Go check him out. All his stuff is in the show description on both Facebook and on YouTube. I will be back on this evening, 7 p.m. tomorrow at 8 p.m. So you can see me again and again. Thank you for giving me a chunk of your afternoon, guys. I will see you all very soon.